much and thank you for inviting me here again at this really interesting two days um, on this very important topic which we're all confronted with in the European Union and outside the European Union. I'm going to present you some findings from our research on uh, the Working Conditions Survey, but mainly what the concept entails and how certain countries have um, tackled policies um, about it and how it is actually the responsibility of multiple actors. So when we're thinking about tackling demographic change, more people at work for longer, um, what does it mean? Um, it does not only mean changing our pension systems in order to increase retirement age, it has much more. We must make sure that people can stay and are willing to stay until retirement age. That's already a first challenge, notably, for instance, in my country, Belgium, where a lot of people go on early retirement, and I think also here in Slovenia. But it's also reflecting on what can you do that people can reach that retirement age within work, like what needs to be done. For pension age, you can kind of think about certain jobs which are very difficult and give them extra credits so they can go earlier. You can give credits for years you have done or to other activities, being uh, military service or taking care of children, etc. But then also for all kinds of workers, how can we ensure that people can uh, work until a later age and are willing to do so? So sustainable work over the life course means that working and living conditions are so, such that they support people in engaging and remaining in work throughout an extended working life. Very much into the line of what the former speaker said, adapt the work to the workers and making sure that they can do it and are willing to do it. So these conditions enable a fit between work and the characteristics or circ circumstances of the individual, but throughout um, their changing working life. And there might be different needs throughout the working life, and people might have to embrace also certain changes themselves. And they must be developed through policies and practices at work and outside of work. What is the combination of different elements which make work sustainable? So quality of work and employment has multiple aspects, and they all need to be tackled, and they integrate. And certain effects um, can be evened out or built up over the working life. Working long hours um, is not very healthy, we know from research. However, maybe if you do it with particular times of your life, it's okay. But if it's combined with work intensity and keep on going and no rest periods in between periods, maybe that at a certain moment might become very hard to bear for certain workers. Then also, we must need to reflect on what changes are possible in working life and a kind of career management, and certain countries have started to build up practices like that. For instance, um, a football player or a ballet dancer, they know they won't be able to do that job until 60 or 65. They know that they have to think about a second career at a certain stage. And maybe we need to reflect also whether this is possible for other workers, whether this comes into, uh, this is something which we can reflect on. This could be either in the workplace by getting a, a, a different role or kind of reflecting on other uh, elements to do in life. Then there are changes throughout life course, critical uh, life events, childbearing and rearing, unemployment spells, maybe also these job transitions, how are they catered for? Are people getting help in order to um, kind of do for it so they can combine working and non-working life? And these changes can change throughout the life course, so um, transitions might be needed. Maybe certain workers might want to reduce their working hours at a certain part of their life, where uh, all things come together, both working life and private life, but maybe they want to increase again at a later stage, and is that possible? So, when looking at employment participation of uh, men and women, and here I look at men, I uh, compare to different countries in the European Union. And the orange bar and the light blue for uh, Slovenia um, says the uh, male employment rate between 15 and 64, uh, where you see that Slovenia is in the second half, but uh, not necessarily much lower than the other countries. But if you look at the employment rates of 55, 64, there Slovenia is scoring lower than other countries in the European Union. And a similar finding we find for employment participation of women um, where again you can find Slovenia, uh, the, the light blue 1564 and the darker blue uh, 55, 64 years of age. 
then the other element which needs to be taken into account, it's not only about uh, participating in work and working until you die, it's also about healthy life years at 65, which is one of the indicators also developed by Eurostat. And there we also see that there are big differences within the European Union. And Slovenia there is also in the second half of the year, but um, kind of uh, in very similar uh, circumstances as uh, Italy, Poland, and slightly lower than the European average, but not so much lower. But still, it is something to really take in mind as well when reflecting on pension age, but also on how can we ensure that people um, can work and be healthy off, off work as well and build up their resources in working life. And that's what we're trying to look at. Here I present some findings for the from the survey which we carried out um, in 2015. They're very new findings and um, only some preliminary results are available at this stage. And I know that uh, Dr. Uh, Marcella has been, is doing the analysis for Slovenia. We are currently doing the analysis for the European Union and we will come with more results. I just give you a sneak preview a little bit. And here we looked at working, the survey was done in 35 countries. Um, European Union, uh, Norway and Switzerland who pay to be part of it, and then some uh, neighboring countries like uh, Montenegro, Serbia, uh, Albania, Macedonia and Turkey. And um, we interview both workers, workers, employees and self-employed about many aspects of uh, working conditions. And the sample size is between uh, 1,000 and 3,300 per country. And uh, Slovenia has top up the sample size, so you have a slightly bigger uh, sample size for Slovenia, which allows more analysis uh, to be done for your country. So th we are th really grateful for the ministry for doing this effort, and I hope this is very useful for your policies. Um, here we look at working some working conditions which I, I selected which might be uh, problematic for sustainability of work. And we look at workers of different age and looked whether they're exposed. Um, and where you see the, the uh, age, the green bar is the um, older workers, 50 plus. The uh, red bar is between 35 and 49 years of age. And the um, blue bar is the, what we call the younger workers under 35 years of age. Where you see these arrows, we see that young workers are more exposed to those working conditions. Fear of losing their job in the next six months, they're often in temporary contracts as well. Not able to change their work methods, so they have less autonomy. Um, adverse social behavior, they're slightly more exposed. Working at high speed, more than three quarters of the time. Also, uh, that is tr harder for workers. And shift work. Um, they're doing more of the shift work, and this goes down over age. With regard to pi painful and tiring positions, we see that there's not so much difference between younger older and middle, uh, middle prime age workers and older workers. And this actually has been changing. Certain of the working conditions where workers were more protected, they seem to get less protection uh, with age, uh, kind of with, with time advancing, and uh, they're more exposed to this as well. And then there are also other working conditions where older workers uh, experience more of the uh, potentially negative effects. So older workers are more exposed to re um, restructuring. They have um, more than 60% of the workers, uh, of the older workers say that they had no training provided in the last 12 months. Um, more workers um, say that there are more than 32% of the workers say that they're not learning new things uh, over the age of 50. Um, more workers say that they have poor prospects, more older workers say that they have poor prospects for a career advancement, uh, kind of these kind of differences between different groups of age. But we, work, we know that working conditions matter for both younger and older workers, and also we need to tackle not only the working conditions of the older workers and spare them of the most negative ones, but we must probably um, reflect also on the younger worker and how to see how he can age in work in a decent way. Um, we have a question in the working condition survey, and I think uh, the former speaker referred to it as well. Do you think you would be able to do your current job until you're 60? And there we find big differences in the European uh, Union. In Portugal, Germany, Denmark, Ireland, and Sweden, more than 80% of the workers say yes to this question. 
However, there are big differences. And while Slovenia has made a big jump between the last wave and this wave, and uh, it's still among the countries where we find lower percentages of workers thinking that they can do so. Until 60, we say, we say here. Um, and actually, France is at the moment a country where even less workers um, are saying that they can do their work until they're 60. And I think the, the government of France is very much aware of the issue and trying to uh, reflect upon it. And I know that in Slovenia, you're doing quite a lot of efforts as well to reflect on those situations. And I think this uh, seminar uh, will contribute to the reflection on measures to take. When I looked at that question and tried to analyze what are the determinants uh, which make um, which kind of uh, are important in this. Autonomy is a very important thing. People thinking that they can organize themselves, choose their methods, uh, the order of things to do is very important for workers in order, it's a very good predictor of um, sustainability of work or being able to do the job at least until 60. Work intensity is very negative. So this Karasek thing that um, if you have autonomy and kind of very high demands, uh, if you don't have autonomy and very high demands, it's very detrimental for your health, is an important element which remains. Then the second element, and I think uh, Dr. Petricek already mentioned already some of these elements, work-life balance, being able to combine your working life with your private life. And uh, there are a number of elements uh, which are important for that. But one of them um, really jumped out of the analysis, and that this is having some control over your working time in the sense that if you have a private issue, are you able to take some time off at short notice? We know that's not possible in all jobs, but if this is possible, this is really very helpful for workers in order to be able to stay. So if you have a private issues, be it uh, having to take, pick up a ch sick child at the kindergarten or uh, your private issues to take care of, this is very, very important. And it's not necessarily costly for um, workplaces to organize this, and this has a very positive effect. Then cognitive dimensions of work, um, being able to learn in the job, uh, being creative, thinking about issues um, is a very positive element which increases the likelihood of answering positively to this question. Then being involved in the workplace organization and innovation. So being able to think as well how you can improve the work processes and products, etc. Feeling part of that organization and having some way of um, contributing that is a very positive element and getting support from your colleagues and managers is also a very important element. Um, ICT might change some of these elements as well, and isolation could be a problem uh, from workers working at distant places, but maybe there are other ways of, of dealing with some of these things. Very important as well, and I think this is something which is much more difficult to tackle in, um, in policies, but it is a very important element in it. And I think um, the Secretary of State already mentioned it this morning as well, is these intrinsic rewards. So having the feeling that you're doing valuable work, that you're appreciated for the work you do, and also that you have the feeling of doing good work. I think these, these things are really, really important for workers in order to, for them to, stay that they, the, to say that they want to continue working. I think if you have a feeling that your, your place, you're appreciated at your workplace, this is a very, very important element. Um, the feeling of doing good work, this might also be related um, with certain changes in the workplace. Work intensity might kind of hinder certain things. The rhythm has to go up and people have to do more and more in a short term of time. And we know case studies of, for instance, nurses who find it more and more difficult. They used to have these five, 10 minutes for patients to talk a little bit and thought this was part of their job. And now they have to go so quick they can't do it anymore. And this is a really important element to, to mind, to, to reflect upon. And I think um, this is something which, which we need in these times where it has to go quicker, we have, we have to become more efficient, more productive, we have to bear in mind it's an important element. And then some very negative aspects, violence and harassment. Po people who are exposed to this are really, really uh, at risk. Exposure to ergonomic risks and job insecurity, that you might lose your job and you don't have a, is a, mental, is a mental problem. So uh, these issues need to be taken care of. So we developed a concept, both elements in job quality, uh, which are uh, very important. So 
the job itself, looking both at remuneration, prospects, intrinsic job quality, so this uh, physical and social environment and not being exposed to many risks there and getting some support, skills and autonomy, work intensity, and also some working time quality, not having to work these uh, long hours or uh, being limited in that, um, not having to do these reverting shifts, uh, as were mentioned before, uh, these are really important. So job quality is the first thing which needs to be tackled. And I think legislation is really important there, combined with um, then activities at, at company level. Um, and public policy, social partners and companies are then are very important. But then also taking care of other aspects time availability and care needs. So how can you cater for it? And it's also, it is true, it's not only the children, but it might be the grandchildren combined with your elderly parents for which you need a little bit of time. And this can be done either through care infrastructure, policies which allow you to reduce your working hour or take parental leave, but also through company practices where you could get a little bit of flexibility, maybe reduce your working hour or maybe to be able to go out of the workplace a little bit uh, quicker in order to take care of um, your elder. And for your elderly parents, often if there is a care infrastructure in some countries we see you need to be able to go there once a month or once a, once a week or a few times a week and be able to go from the office a little bit earlier. That could be good. Health and well-being, inclusion policies, people with reduced physical and mental health capacity and health promotion are important. Skills and employability, so this lifelong learning and skills development throughout the life course, not only for the job itself, but maybe also reflect a little bit wider. Unemployment and inactivities, getting back into the job lifelong guidance and job matching, but also those workers at an, at, a, at an older age, well, older age, from 50 onwards already, it's very difficult if you don't have a job, if you have lost your job, to find another job again. And even in countries where they're quite advanced, this is something which is coming up very strongly. And then motivation, so the meaningful work, the functions of work itself. So it's both job quality on the one hand, and then the interaction between the individual and the job and the different needs which you need to tackle in order to ensure that employment rates go up and that all kinds of workers, men and women, throughout their life works can continue. Um, we did some case studies, and I'm going only to mention some elements because I know time is pressing. We did case studies in 10 countries on policies and strategies which deal with it, and we find a different focus in each country. There's no country well, apart from Sweden, maybe they call it sustainable work, but they all call it slightly differently. It's sustainable work, sustainable employability, workability, quality of work, etc. But in some countries you find a horizontal strategy, in other countries it's much more fragmented. And I think it is very important to reflect about the fragmentation and how they interlink. All of them have policies related to each of the dimensions, ensuring career em employment security. So, for instance, um, I had some examples here which I wanted to give you. Um, so helping people to get into the job and making transitions from one job to the other. Um, maintaining and promoting health and well-being of the workers. And I think throughout this day we will have many examples of that. And I think our sister agency, EU OSHA, will also come up with some elements of it. It has to do with the risk assessment, the, the strategies uh, which emanate from that but also return to work policies and how not only the worker, but also the workplace is uh, kind of adapted to that. And in some countries, we also find uh, some accompaniment on certain issues like cancer, which is affecting so many workers in their working life these days. And how do you prepare the worker to come back for work? And when, maybe already earlier, but with really limited capacity. And how do you prepare the colleagues uh, in order to cater for it? So it's not, you're not the kind of the, the weak worker in a group, it's becoming a, a, gr a group thing. Then reconciliation between work and non-working life is very important. Preventing these long hours or these very social hours or working hours which are not good for your health, but also reconciliation between uh, work and your uh, private commitments. And developing skills and competences, not only giving training. I think training is very important. Uh, but also uh, the work organization which allows you to learn from each other, which is very important. And the breadth and depth of policies we found was very different. So you find something on every single bullet point in each of the countries, but how far they go and how much they link it really with sustainability of work 
and both related to job quality and the interaction between the individual and work is very Im important. And they have very different uh, implications for uh, the likelihood of sustainability. And then we found some contradictions within the countries. Quite often, we find a lack of comprehensive strategies. Different ministries were coming out with policies which were contradictory and which would not kind of all in itself increase uh, sustainability. And there was often no talk you, between different ministries. They weren't even aware that some of these policies uh, are linked. A pension policy on the one hand, not backed up by a, a, a job quality policy, is somehow losing some of its effectiveness or might have perverse effects that you uh, bring certain people who are either stop working anyway because they can't anymore or they stay in work with a price either on health or, or on kind of, uh, um, so it's either a price of health or poverty for some workers maybe. And this is something to uh, really bear in mind. And then it's important to bring your social partners um, kind of involved in it and the uh, companies play a major, major role in it. In some of the countries we find the impact of the crisis. Certain of the policies which were more advancing were felt that they were a bit costly and maybe needed to reflect upon. Some of these reconciliation policies are among that, um, and this is very important. Um, gender issue remains in, in important, and then it's not sufficient to increase the retirement age, etc. But it's very important to involve all the actors. And I think um, that's my last point I wanted to say. It is so important that all the elements are uh, linked together. It's legislation, which is really important, policies to improve, and I think this award you're going to give is a very important one, but then combined with these um, workplace practices and the transitions to try and have a kind of a more comprehensive strategy uh, combined with social infrastructure. It costs money, but it's an investment in a way as well for a society in order to make sure that people, uh, men and women, can stay into employment uh, in a satisfactory way, building up their resources throughout their working life. So that's the last point I wanted to say, and thank you very much for your attention.